Hi everyone and welcome to Revised Chemistry with Mr B. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to draw and write the electronic structures for different atoms. Make sure you stay around till the end of the video because there's two very important points you need to know for your exam. First of all we need to remember how to work out the number of electrons for different atoms. So remember it's the atomic number of an element that tells us the number of electrons that its atoms have. So in the case of aluminium, we can see the bottom number is the atomic number, and that's 13. So aluminium atoms have 13 electrons. Electron shells can also be called energy levels. And remember, the electrons orbit around the nucleus in those shells or energy levels. And there's certain rules we need to remember when drawing the electronic structures of atoms and that's how many electrons can fit on each shell or energy level. So the first shell, the one nearest the nucleus, can hold two electrons. That's also known as the lowest energy level. The second shell can hold up to eight electrons. The third shell can hold up to eight electrons, and the fourth shell can hold up to 18 electrons. So remember those numbers, two, eight, eight, 18. Now, electronic structures can also be called electron configurations. That's just meaning how are the electrons arranged in the atom. Let's look at an example. So if we look at carbon, we can see from its atomic number on the periodic table that it has six electrons. In the exam, you're usually provided with the electron shells to put the electrons on, so you wouldn't have to draw those yourself. So we can see that for carbon, carbon has six electrons so we would put two on the first shell and then that shell is full and then that leaves us four more electrons to put on the second shell so if we have a quick count up at the end we should end up with six electrons that we've drawn on and we're starting on the inner shell filling that one first and then working our way outwards the black dot in the middle of the atom of course is the nucleus The second example, sodium, is slightly different. Sodium has 11 electrons. So once again, we would start working with the inner shell, the lowest energy level nearest to the nucleus. That can hold up to two electrons. So we'll put two electrons on the first shell. And then the second shell can hold up to eight electrons. So we put the first four on as normal. But then once we get to four electrons, we start pairing up the electrons. So five, six, and seven, and eight start to pair up. In an exam, if you forgot to do that and just spread them out on that shell, you would still get full marks. So we've now put 10 electrons on altogether. So we need to start that third shell and put the last electron on there for sodium. Now, this is drawing the electronic structure with dot and cross diagrams. You can also show the electronic structure by writing it down in numbers and for sodium that will be two comma eight comma one because there's two electrons on the first shell nearest the nucleus eight electrons on the second shell and then one electron on the third shell so i'm going to give you some um, questions to practice on to see if you understand this properly for each one i would like you to draw the electronic structure and also write the electronic structure in numbers. So for each one, I'm going to leave a slight pause so that you can pause the video, have a go on some paper and then resume the video. So the first one I'd like you to have a go at is drawing and writing the electronic structure for lithium. So let's see how you've got on. Lithium has three electrons. So that means we have to put two electrons on the first shell and that leaves one electron to go on the second shell so that will be two comma one so well done if you got that one correct second example to have a go at is sulfur okay so sulfur has 16 electrons so that means we have to put two electrons on the first shell that's full. Remember, 2, 8, 8, 18 is the maximum number they can hold. We can put 8 electrons on the next shell, the first four being separate, and then we start to pair up. 
and that means we've put 10 on all together so far so we need to put six more electrons on the next shell three four and five six and if we do a quick count up we should have drawn 16 electrons on the sulfur atom so in writing the electronic configuration is 2 comma 8 comma 6 remember we're working our way from the nucleus outwards okay so have a go at fluorine now fluorine has nine electrons so once again two on the inner shell and that means we need to put seven electrons on the outer shell. Of course, you can draw these diagrams with crosses or dots, whatever your preference is. So now we've got two on the first shell and seven on the next shell. The last example I'd like you to try to check that you really understand this is calcium. So we can see calcium has 20 electrons from its atomic number on the periodic table. So that means we have to put two electrons on the first shell. That's the maximum amount that small inner shell can hold. Then we put eight electrons on the next shell. There we go. And we also need to put eight electrons on the third shell because that's the maximum amount that the third shell can hold. Remember, you can also draw these with crosses if you prefer to draw crosses if you find it a little bit quicker. And so we've put 18 electrons on so far. So that means we've just got two more electrons to put on that outer shell. So if we write the electron configuration in numbers, it will be 2, 8, 8, two working from the nucleus outwards well done if you got that one correct i did say at the start of the video there will be a couple of important points at the end and the first one is how the electronic structure of an atom relates to the group number that it's found in on the periodic table so if we have a look at some that we've already drawn we've got lithium sulfur and fluorine so lithium is in group one sulfur is in group six and fluorine is in group seven and what we notice is that the group number is the number of electrons on the outer shell of that atom the second important point is how the electronic structure relates to the period number where the element is found so let's look at these that we've already drawn fluorine sodium calcium fluorine is in period two that means the second row of the periodic table sodium is in period three calcium period four and what we can see quite clearly is the period number is the number of electron shells for that atom so please remember to like and subscribe thank you for watching